So we're working on a 2003 Toyota Tundra today, and we're gonna be changing some front and rear suspension and steering pieces, uh, mostly the uh, camber and caster adjusting eccentric sleeves and bolts and nuts on the lower control arms, uh, along with the bushings. The bushings are shot, so we're gonna change those, press those in. Um, and then it's also gonna get a ball joint, an outer tie rod end, and a pair of sway bar links in the front. These bushings here are for the rear leaf springs. We'll do that in a separate gonna, video. Yeah, do that one in a separate video. Just some part numbers in case you're wondering. The eccentrics from the front and the back, they're different types. But the bolts are the same from front and back. Weird. So. All right, so to start, these bolts here that come out will run into the steering rack. So we're gonna have to move the rack out of the way. And I believe I'm going to take the hardware off for the rack and I might just try to leave the steering shaft on and see if I have enough room. If I don't have to take it apart, I don't want to take it apart. But you have one nut here with a stud that goes into, oh, actually a bolt that goes through. Uh, you got one bolt and a nut that goes onto a stud. And then there's a bolt that goes in through the top. Um, I believe they're 19 or 21 millimeter. So you're hoping that's enough room to get that guy out? I hope so. Oh, she's tight. Um, so I can't get the rack up far enough to get these bolts out. So what I'm going to do is take the bolts off of the sway bar mount, take the mount off. I got to change the links anyway. So I'm just going to drop, take, probably take the sway bar right out, cut the mounts off or cut the links off. And uh, that'll give me enough room to push the rack up to get the bolts out. So I took the sway bar mounts off. Toyota does something a little different. They got a stud on one side and a hole on the other. So you got a nut and bolt combo. Um, They're both 14 millimeter heads. So I just took the bar and just dropped it back. And we're gonna see if we have enough room now. Gonna have to take this bar right off. That sucks. So I'm getting the bolts out right now. Just to show you how this works, you've got this tube has an eccentric on it. It slides through first, and the bushing actually sits on the outside of this tube. Then on the other side, this other eccentric nut, it goes in like that. And then you got a bolt that goes through and holds them together. Sort of a silly design, but um, yeah, just fighting right now to get them off. I gotta save all these nuts, so. Um, so in order to move the rack away far enough to get those bolts out on the backside, I did have to take the sway bar down. And like I say, two bolts, or yeah, two bolts, two nuts, and move it out of the way. You'll have to take at least one of the links off. You can see I just swung the whole bar around to the side. That link was broken. We're changing it anyways, so. You get that out of the road, and then you got enough room to get the rack and move it where you need to move it. Gonna use uh, a little punch and try to uh, see if I can get underneath of this. Um, so in order to get these ones off, they're super stuck on there because, you know, Canada. And um, I had to use the air hammer. Get in there and uh, rip them off, so. 
Well, how do you get the sleeves out? Um, I might try to like use the torch and put fire through them, heat okay. them up, and then just drive them out. Or you could just take like a sawzall and slip up behind the frame and just cut them. I do have uh, new ones, so. If they get wrecked, whatever. But those are what you'll need to buy for sure. Like if you, uh, if, if these are seized and they're not gonna come out. By hand, by like sliding them out, right? Yeah, these things, what happens is the bushing is metal inside. So this goes through here. Well, then it gets all rusty in here and it just like weld seizes itself together with rust and you can never get the sleeve out. So you'll end up hitting the end of the, the sleeve and it'll mushroom out and you just end up destroying this piece. Okay, so before I take those sleeves out down there, um, I'm gonna just take the, the shock out or unbolt it just to take the, uh, <clears throat> the spring out of it. Otherwise, if you chop those off, the sway, the sway arm or the uh, control arm is gonna wanna drop down. And uh, you may not be able to get it back up, I'm not sure, but I gotta go in and change a bunch of other pieces anyways. So um, right now I'm just gonna take a bunch of the brakes off. I'm gonna take this knuckle off. Um, well, we just uh, keep taking things off here, so yeah, I uh, decided that I was just going to take the knuckle off and just get right in there and change everything. Honestly, you could probably just stick a jack underneath of here to keep this from dropping out while you change those pieces, if you don't have to go in and change everything. but. In this case, like I'm putting sway bar links, tie rod end, ball joint, might as well just take it all apart, right? Um, I like how somebody changed this ball joint and just put a, a nipple that's straight up instead of an angled one. So when the, uh, the knuckle sits on there, the bearing actually just covers the end of it and you can't actually grease it. So that's great, whoever did that, good job. Anyhow, I'm gonna take this off now. I'm gonna try the first one with uh, the sawzall and just slip up in between like there and just go for it try to like cut that tube so um so i'm going to try a couple different things to see how quick i can get these out but we know that we have to cut the ends off of this so that we can drop them out because those sleeves are seized solid in the bushing so options that we have using the uh, reciprocating saw or hacksaw or um, whatever, sawzall. sawzall, that was uh, gonna take a while. So then I thought, uh, okay, well, I'm gonna use a zip disc and just make cuts in there and then just knock out all the pieces. That should be the quickest way. I know I could use a torch, that's probably the quickest way, but I really don't wanna mess the frame up at all and I don't want to melt pieces of the control arm off so I'm just trying to be as careful as I can and uh yeah so I'm just gonna use the zip disc and that's that was actually pretty quick I did that in like a minute so cut a bunch of pieces off and um yeah see how quick we can do this so um we got the arm out I'm gonna uh take the uh bushings over to the press press them out Take yeah, the ball joint off too. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And uh, what were you cleaning up over here? Uh, just cleaning up the surface that the centric washers and bolts uh, sit on. And that didn't work nice. I got, successfully got the first pushing out. Uh, no lock on the press. Wasn't gonna happen, so. Just uh, air hammered it out. Yeah, use the air hammer. Um, so, we got our control arms and the, uh, the bushings are out, that was fun. Uh, basically now there's a bunch of uh, 
nicks and stuff around the edges from where I was using the air hammer to get in there and had different bits and stuff on it but got to clean all that up before we put the bushings in so I grabbed uh, a burr tool here that I just put on the end of my drill to just go around here and that cleans up the edges and then as you notice there's a bunch of rust that's on the inside so that's all got to come out otherwise it's just too tight and you might get the bushing halfway in and it's going to be a real pain so just uh got myself a little abrasive disc and put it on the end of the grinder and just get right inside there and clean that all out nice and we'll head over to the press so i got my uh this is the arm here we got the bushing sitting in it and then i put a socket underneath because the bushing protrudes past through the arm so uh, I need somewhere for it to go through while holding the arm. Um, I've put uh, a couple pieces of steel over top of it so that um, the force is distributed somewhat evenly. <laughs> and then uh, a little spacer. So. So now it gets a bit stiff because the bushing, um, it's tapered at the end. I don't know if you can see that or not, oh, but yeah, you can. as it gets to the end there, it's tapered and that's just to help with the snug fit to keep it from uh, shifting back and out. So now we got to crank her in. Um, I'm just going to make sure my socket is centered. I am working on getting some uh, tools set up, different uh, sizes of um, adapters and such so that I don't have to make it so sketchy. Okay, so we're pretty much maxed out there. It looks good. Yep. This press needs service, as you can tell. So, we've got our arms all ready to go back in. Got the uh, bushings pressed in. I just cleaned up the... Uh, the threads on these nuts, I was able to save the nuts and uh, I was able to save the, actually I was able to save all the bolts, but I did buy the back ones because they were super tight. As you could hear, they were uh, creaking away. But anyhow, I'm um, just putting the arms in. The orientation that they go in, like these sleeves and nuts and bolts all have to go in a certain way. So you've got long ones in the front, short ones in the back. Now, the sleeve with the washer, as you can see, goes in from the front, the washer side on the front. And for the back, they go in like this. So, then the nut slides on the end here, and then you put your bolt through from front and back. Um, update here. So we're working on passenger side. Arms in, the shocks on, got to tighten that up. Um, and then we put a new ball joint in on this side because the other one that was in here, um, unfortunately, it was just a cheap one and it didn't last more than 20 days without going bad. So, never seen a ball joint go that early, but it was shaking a bit in the front. Could have rattled it apart. But uh, yeah, I think it would uh, at least hold up a little better than that. So, we're going to put a new tie rod end on and then start sticking some more things on. 
Um, so we got uh, our suspension on. Now I'm just running the, uh, putting the brakes back on, running the caliper through underneath of the knuckle. Just gonna bolt this on. Um, I still have to change that tie rod end, so we're gonna do that next, I think. And then uh, this side should be pretty well done. All right, so it's been a long day, but we finally got her done. Uh, it took a lot longer than I anticipated, but eh, it's all done now. Um, just to recap, we did these sleeves in here, the bolts and the nuts. Um, that's for your camera caster adjustment. The bushings as well. The bushings were uh, ripped right out of it, so there was a lot of slop in the front uh, control arm, and it was just terrible uh, steering and handling. Uh, also, ended up having to change that brake line because it uh, decided to let go last minute, which is par for the course. Uh, we changed this ball joint, both sway bar links, the passenger outer tie rod end, and I believe that's it. Um, yeah, you can see it got the rack and everything's back in there now. Sway bar is back up. And we got everything back together. So if you got any questions, throw them down in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for next time.